Hi everybody, my name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for the victories that he's given me over my life, over all these compulsions and these bad habits and addictions that I've had. And he has just saved me from all of this. And so today we have a great devotional. It's in the book of John. And it's it's a story I would say a lot of us are very familiar with. And a lot of us might have been not actually put in this position, but might have possibly been put in a position sort of like this. But before we get started, let's give thanks to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you, Lord, that just you're such an awesome God that you take care of us so much. And Father, I am just grateful for your word that each time I read it, it opens my eyes to just a different a different aspect of your, of your love and, and just what you provide for us, Father God. I thank you for your son, just thank you so much. And so today, Father, I just lift up my family to you, Lord. I am grateful. I got to see my brother, who I haven't seen for a while yesterday, and it was just so good visiting. And so, Father, I just pray for him and his blessings. He just lost his wife and, and his father so close together. And so, Lord, I lift him to you. Oh, but, Lord, I just lift up my friends, my family to you, Father God, in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it was so good to see my brother. I hadn't seen him in years. It's terrible to say, but, you know, that's my brother. <laughs> so, hey, before we do jump in here, we are in the book of John. It's John 8, and we're going to be reading 1 through 11. And it's it's a story of, of Jesus, it, again, the Pharisees, the, the legal, the Jewish legal folks, they wanted to um, they wanted to try to catch him off guard with with things to to try to get stuff on him to to persecute him to get rid of him basically is what they were doing and so let me just jump in and get started with this like I said it's it's chapter eight of John one through eleven oh, let's see. So it starts off, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. That's, that's a, a point there that you want to remember. They brought in a woman by herself caught in adultery. Where was the man? Hmm. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis of, for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write in the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he stood up, he straightened up and said to them, Let any of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and he wrote in the ground. I think this is Jesus dealing with the hypocrisy of, of these Pharisees and the Jewish law people. Um, in Romans 3.23, he deals again with hypocrisy. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? No one has condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and leave your life of sin. Go and sin no more, is what he basically told her. You know, and what's really, really sad is, you know, they use this to try to trap him, like it said. But this poor woman, I mean, okay, she was caught in adultery, but there was a, it takes two to tango. But they only brought her in. You know, and I really just, that's always bothered me. But you know, Jesus didn't condemn the woman accused of adultery, but neither did he ignore or condone her sin. He told her to leave her life of sin. So Jesus stands ready to forgive any sin in your life, but confession and repentance means a change of heart. And I think she had a change of heart after this. With God's help, we can accept Christ's forgiveness and stop our wrongdoing. Amen? So it just... It, it just kind of 
reading this, it, it always has bothered me with this. You know, they, they drag somebody in. The Jewish leaders had already disregarded the law by arresting the woman without the man. The law required that both parties to adultery be stoned. And that's in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. The leaders were using the woman as a trap so they could trick Jesus. If Jesus said the woman should be stoned, they would accuse him of violating, should not be stoned, they would accuse him of violating Moses' law. If he urged them to execute her, they would report him to the Romans, who did not permit the Jews to carry out their own executions. So they thought they had him. They thought they had him, but they did not. But I love the fact that Jesus, as they're asking him this, he just bent down and he was writing basically in the dirt, soft dirt, you know, so they could probably see the letters that he was writing. What were they seeing? We don't know. But most likely he was writing down the sins that those elders, those Pharisees, the law people, I don't know what to call them, they were guilty of, you know. And so each one slowly, I'm sure, slid away like a sneaky snake, you know, because they saw their sin being written in the dust. They saw their sin written in dust. And so each of them just kind of backed off and went away because none of them was without sin. So we are in the book, well, the Life Recovery Devotional. I am not all here. It's step five and it's day seven and it's called Feelings of Shame. Shame has kept many of us in hiding. The thought of revealing ourselves to another human being stirs up feelings of shame and the fear of being publicly exposed. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, the law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? Jesus stooped down and he wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and he wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. And again, it's John 8, 1 through um, 11, or 3 through 11. Many believed that it was Jesus writing in the dust that caused the accusers to leave. Perhaps he was listing the secret sins of the Jewish leaders. If this was true, it gives us a beautiful picture of the kind of person Jesus is, a person with whom we can safely expose our secrets. When we choose someone to, to go over that inventory that we had, it said, you know, step five is we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. When we choose someone, we need, to, we need to carefully choose someone, someone that we trust. Our confessor needs to be someone who is not surprised by sin and will not be waiting to condemn us. Such a person needs to take private note of our wrongs, writing them in the soft dust, not etching them in stone, and posting them in public. Since shame can be a trigger for addic addictive behavior, we need to be careful about whom we choose. And I love that, that picture of this, that you're, you're going to be professing these, these secrets of yours to your confessor, and they're going to be privately taking note, but they're going to be writing it in soft dust so that it can be blown away and it's gone. He's not going to etch it in stone so that he can bring it back and remind you of these things. Take, take heed when you start to choose someone to go over your step, go over your inventory with them. Take heed of who you're talking to. You want somebody that you trust, someone that's not going to be surprised at sin. I mean, <laughs> we always think that, oh my God, I can't tell anybody what I've done. They would... It would, it would shock them. But you know what? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. So just, just think hard before you choose someone that you want to sit down and ask them, please, I, I want to go over my inventory with you. And y you do. You want someone that's just going to listen. They're not going to condemn. They're not going to give you advice on it either. You want someone that's just going to listen 
Okay, you know, they're not going to be surprised. They're not going to judge. And when it's done, it's like writing in the dust. They're just going to, and it's gone. All right, that's what, that's what this is all about. They're not going to hold on to this so they can bring it back, you know, in the future to condemn you on something. Okay, so think twice before you choose someone to sit down and review your step five with you. With God's help, we can accept his forgiveness and be released from our shame. That's what this is. When you're, when you're voicing these secrets, you're being released from that. You're being released of the shame that it can bring you. And just remember, it's God's role to judge, not ours. Our role is to show forgiveness and compassion. We need to recognize our own sinful nature and look for ways to help others rather than to hurt them. So let me just say this, that if someone comes to you and asks you, hey, will you sit with me and listen to my, my inventory? Take that as a compliment. That means these people trust you. They trust that you're not going to condemn them. They trust that you're not going to judge them. That is a comment to your character. So if someone does ask you to listen, that, that is quite a compliment. All right? So hey, you guys have a great day today. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day here. And just uh, continue to pray for yourself, for your friends, for your family. Remember that prayer is our most powerful tool that we have that keeps us connected with God in heaven. Amen. So we'll talk at you tomorrow.